In this mini lesson, we're going to take a look at the histogram tool in the data analysis tool pack. I've downloaded and opened the Stats 101 data set, and now I'm going to make a copy of the original data and just work on the, that copy. Let me change the name. Okay. Let's get rid of the columns that we don't need. I'm only going to take a look at the Math 30 column, so let's get rid of all of the other columns except for the Respondent column. And then I just want to show you how the Math 30 are organized. So I'm going to highlight a couple of highlight a row here and color it just to show you that the respondents also sort when I sort the Math 30 column. I'm going to go to data and then the A to Z sort. By the way, the histogram tool does not require that the Math 30 data be sorted. It will work on the unsorted data. But you'll notice that it goes from 50 down to 100. And then on the data tab, I've got the data analysis tool pack, and I've got something called histogram. Now, I'm not going to open that at this point. We have to set up the spreadsheet first, so I'm going to cancel that. If you have trouble with any of the steps that I've gone through so far, take a look at getting started in Excel. That video has a lot of useful tips for getting going. Now, suppose I wanted to set up some classes. If I was to do this by hand, I would say that my class might go from 50 to 59, and 60 to 69, whoops, and so on, all the way down. Eighty to eighty-nine. Last one here, I'll just go up to 100. Now, I could put in class marks and so on like this, but I'm going to skip that. Suppose I just want the frequencies of each class. Well, one thing I could do is I could sort the data, which I've done here, and then manually count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So there's 17 of those. I think there's 21 60s, I've already done this before, and so on. That's actually quite a hassle to do that. It's got to be an easier way. And there is. So this is what you do. Let me get rid of that column, column E. Now, right below where I've got my classes, or instead of my classes, I don't even, I don't even have to set up the classes like this, I'm going to put in the variable name. So math. 30. Notice I've left a blank column between the data and the output. That's an important thing to do. Please again take a look at the getting started in Excel and it will explain why I do that. Below the label math 30 I'm going to put in the upper bounds of each class. So the upper class of 50 to 59 is 59. The upper class of 60 to 69 is 69, and so on, all the way down. Just a single number in each case. The last one, I've got an upper bound of 100. If you had an open-ended class, let's say they were incomes and you had, as your last class, 200,000 plus, you could put in some practical upper limit. Now, if you were going up by, say, intervals of 20,000, then you would put in... 220,000 as a practical upper limit, but you may want to go higher if there's some higher values there, excluding any outliers. So anyways, 100 is my upper bound for math 30 marks. So this particular range here, let me just color it yellow, and the functionality of of the histogram tool doesn't depend on this being highlighted in any way. That's just so that you, we can focus in on this. So I've put a label, Math 30, and then I've put 
what we call the bin range, which is the upper bounds of each of the classes. So this whole yellow section here is called the bin range. Okay, now we're ready to go into data, data analysis, histogram. Okay. The input range is all the values in column B, including the label at the top. So I'm going to start with B1, and then selecting, drag down to the very bottom. So it says B1 to B101. The bin range are those yellow cells which we actually typed in. Remember, the histogram requires you to create these cells first. So my bin range goes from D10 to D15. Tell it you've got labels. So notice I included B1 as a label and then Math30, D10 as a label. Down here at the bottom, choose Chart Output. And then I can either choose a new worksheet or I can click on the output range. And if I do that, just make sure that I click down here in the white space that says output range. Otherwise, I'll mess up my input range. So I'm going to click here. And then I've actually scrolled down to the very bottom here because that's where I was before. So I'm going to scroll back up just so I can keep things at the top. Otherwise, you're searching all over the place. And I'm just going to find a spot here that has nothing below it and nothing to the right, and I'm going to press OK. And what I end up with then is, here's my histogram table. This shows the upper bounds of the classes, and here's the frequency. So here's that 1750s, which we counted before, the 2169s, and so on. This zero says that there are no values which are more than the 100, which was the upper bound of the last class. Next thing that I do is I want to clean up this chart or, or graph. And I want you to notice that this is a, a floating object. So when I click on it, actually, I can move this around wherever I want. And in fact, in this particular chart, there's a bunch of different parts or objects. So if I want to change the title, I can just simply double click on the, on the uh, title or select it in some sort of way here and I can change the name. This is, what are these, Math 30 Marks of Stats 101 Students. I'm just going to put in an enter here so it looks a little cleaner. So there's a new title. I want to make this a little bit bigger because these are so short here. The scale 0 to 50 doesn't look very good, so I'm going to go down here to one of the sizing arrows and I'm going to grab this and just pull it down, holding down my left mouse button. That looks a little better. Let's change a few more things here. See where it says frequency? Just click on that and then up here in the formula bar I can type in a new label. Let's call it number of students. Enter. And that changes them to number of students. Down here in Math 30, I can click on that and just add in Math 30 marks or grades. A couple of last things here. This is the legend. And this is useful if I had multi bars, multicolored bars. So if I had, for instance, the Math 30 marks from students from Red Deer and Math 30 marks from students from Edmonton and then Calgary and so on. So I've got multiple bars for each class here. That would be useful. But I've only got one measure here. And so this is actually a useless thing. And so I'm going to get rid of the legend. Just click on it and push delete. And then the last thing that I'm going to do here to clean up this, this chart is you'll notice this more that has a frequency of zero. I want to get rid of that. So what I do is I go over here to 
this little table that makes the chart, and I'm going to grab this box in the middle at the bottom, the sizing arrow, grab it and move it up like that. So it's above the more, and you can see that that's disappeared. Now, that's pretty clean. What I do now is I, I copy this little table, Control C, or I could go to Home and copy it, and then move over to Word. I'm not going to show you that part. Give it some space and paste it. And similarly, I can click on the actual chart itself, or graph, and also Control C, or copy, and then move over to Word and paste it. So that ends our lesson.